everybody likes to eat. Of course, each may have his own individual preference, but no matter whether it's a hot dog at the county fair or a full course dinner at the Ritz, there's no denying that people like to eat. Food is the high spot in our daily lives. Whether it's aboard a speeding train or in our favorite lunchroom round the corner. For man must eat. And therein lies the secret of the growth and popularity of one of our biggest industries, the restaurant. Here is a business employing over two million persons and doing over two billion dollars worth of business annually. All because people have to eat, like to eat, and don't like the work of fixing their own food. Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Chef Henry Dudley, Chef Gang Radio, and this is the Chef Gang Podcast. Before you do anything else, please go on Chef Gang Radio on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to the channel for further content in this podcast. All right, let's get it started. We're going to talk some serious shit today. Yes, you got to. It's a must. All right, Chef Gang Podcast, episode two. My co-host, the lovely Chef Kimberly Van Klein, the catering cream. What is going on? Hey everybody, what's up? Chef Kimberly Van Klein here, the catering queen. Yeah, you know, it's Black History Month. We're going to definitely like dig deep, go back into our roots and see where food actually started, where it came from. And um, we are very happy, very excited that we have the one and only Aaron, who's a dope chef, done many things in the industry. He's been around for years. I ain't going to spill the beans too much. I'm going to give him that opportunity to do that. But I want to introduce Everybody, Aaron. Chef Aaron Gasson is in the kitchen today. Yes. What's going on, homie? I appreciate you. It's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure, pleasure to have here. you, bro. For sure. For sure, man. What's going on with you, man? Excited to be here, man. It had to be a part of this. The whole the whole movement, man. We are so it. excited to have you. And it's, Jesus. I love it. I love got it. It's a got long it. time coming. Yes. Long so we're going to get to something real quick. Um, I think that before we go into the topic of episode two, we got to recap a little bit from episode one. What you think? That's fair. So, you know, I mean, we got a lot of feedback off of episode one. We did. Chef. We did. How you feeling? How you feeling about that? I mean, you know, I feel, I, I, I don't want to say bittersweet, but I feel that we're going to definitely touch upon some sensitive topics with people that are chefs in the industry and these young millennial chefs versus the old school chefs. There's a, there, there was a lot said. There's a lot that we can learn from them and they can learn from us. I definitely want this to be a platform where we can actually have dialogue, right. you know, and grow as a chef community in the Absolutely. black chef culture. Right. You know what I, mean? I mean, we all do the same thing. It's all about... Um, put food the, on the plate. Yeah, we right. put food on the plate, that's, that's, and we all do the same thing. It's just we do it in different ways. I think that we got some, we got some great feedback, and we got some other feedback, because I think people, some people thought that we were trying to kind of like... Come for them. Yeah. Come for like the IG chefs. And all. It, it, it's that, that's not it, but we have to ask the questions. We have to have the conversations because um, we all are one chef community, right? And, and, and like it's chef gang all over the world. That's just right. what it is, right? Chef gang. All right, so let's get into today's topic. Uh, it's going to be really crazy to have this conversation because it's a conversation that we've been having, you know, sidebar for a long time. And I think that if you are a chef of color, that is probably some questions that you had about this also. And um, this episode is called Farm the Table. It's called Farm the Table for a reason. Mm-hmm. It's not about going out and getting fancy vegetables and stuff like that and recreating them and putting them on a plate. This Farm to Table, in celebration of uh, Black History Month, like Chef Kim said, is about, we, we want to ask the questions and we want to have dialogue about how did African slave culture influence modern day cuisine in America? And actually, maybe even globally, right? Mm-hmm. What, what's going on with black chefs today? You know what I'm saying? Are we getting credit for the things that we do? You know what I'm saying? Are we, and, 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 you know, can we only do this one type of cuisine? Like, like Chef Kim, what do you feel about this topic right now? A few things. Um, so, I grew up in a household where my grandmother taught me how to cook. You know, and my grandmother was a phenomenal cook, a chef in her own right. And now that I'm thinking about it, she used to really work for this um, a British actress by the name of Margot Graham. Mm-hmm. And she traveled the country, the world with her. And she basically just did Southern cooking for this woman. 
but she also traveled with her, so she learned different nationalities. She learned French cuisine. She learned Italian cuisine. She was well-rounded. She was well-rounded, right. And before, I guess, chefs were even chefs at that point, you know. We're going back probably to, like, the early 1900s when this took mm-hmm. place. And I, would, I always remember my grandmother being very, very, like, always adamant about we have to have Sunday dinner. Like, she cooked every single day, but Sunday dinners was, like, our thing to do. And we, you know, and we were the house that everybody came to, or right. the friends, the family, the cousins, the aunts, mm-hmm. the uncles came to every Sunday to have this blowout dinner, and everything was always fabulous, always delicious. And I remember, like, at the age of four years old, this white lady in a portrait on our living room wall. And I was like, who is this, who's this white lady? Right, right, right. right. And that was... <laughs> it's fried chicken, it's everything. Right, like, who's this? <laughs> right, and like, it, wasn't really, it, it was her boss. Right. It's who she cooked for and traveled with that gave her this platform to showcase her own skill set. And it was just phenomenal, you know? And I just feel like in today's culture, we don't get enough credit of the food that we cooked back in the day. Like, when we were slaves and the masters and we had to feed them and their families and everything, we made nothing out of something. Right. Absolutely. No, we made something out of nothing. Right. So that's the reverse. reverse. We made something out of nothing. So whatever you had in the cabinet, you would pull out. You would come with this nice dish, comfort food. They loved it. It was grits. It was shrimp. It, like, it was everything. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, I feel like we don't, as a culture, as black chefs, they get enough credit for where we came from. So I was, I just, how we set the platform. So the, the, according to Wikipedia, the, the, the definition of soul food is an ethnic cuisine traditionally prepared and eaten by African Americans in southern United States. The cuisine is originally from conditions and traditional practice of enslaved West Africans in the colonial period. So basically... So it's only eaten yeah. by African Americans? Yeah, no, no, no. I'm just saying, this is what Wikipedia said. It says traditionally only eaten by African Americans. We, we know true. that that's different. That's not true. But I'm trying to, what I'm trying to ask, and I'm going to throw this to Aaron, is like, you know what I'm saying? Um, how do you feel like the slave trade influenced modern American cuisine? I know for a fact that during the mid, you know, the, the the slave trade and they're bringing over slaves from Africa, that you know the white slave masses would take ingredients and for resources sure. from from Africa to make sure that the slaves on the boat were sustained and they would stay alive and yada yada yada. Then they started growing it and mm-hmm. like, well, how you, how you feel? I mean that that's a whole. I mean that was a whole market and industry. It changed the game completely because you're taking slaves from Africa, bringing them over here. You're growing these different fruits and vegetables mm-hmm. and cuisines, but they don't know how to cook the food. So right. you get so you got so you know what I mean? You bring mm-hmm. them all over here on a boat, you're like, hey listen, while you're over here and I already own you, why don't you go ahead and cook those greens and why don't you cook that 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 spinach, whatever it, it is. Make something good and, out of it. Make right. something good out of it. Mm-hmm. Because that's what they had to do. And in turn they had to do the same thing for their family. They had to do the resources, use the resources, okay, like take this hog and kill it and and get it get it right. Chitlins, chitlins, chitlins like, ribs. Right, because you got right, because these are the things that they they were only exactly. allowed to. to I, I I watched recently on Netflix. I watched a show, uh, documentary kind of uh, miniseries. I think one of my very favorite chefs, David Chang. He has a show on Netflix, yeah, uh, Ugly Delicious. And there's a there, there's a there's one episode called Fried Chicken, and he goes and does a deep dive on fried chicken. He and all these things start to happen. And like yo, I found out like um, you know one of the main things why fried chicken has originated in the black community is because like that was the only commodity that the slave good. owners yeah, actually good. allowed yeah, people, sure. black people, to have. For sure. Like you can keep, you can't keep cows, you yeah, can't yeah. have yeah. all this, but you can have some chickens. So black people started finding inventive ways to use this chicken and so forth mm-hmm. and so on. But now it's like this cultural like taboo, like. You know, there's a lot of taboos in, 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 in our food. Like, what do you think about that? Like, you said yeah, you can't eat this. Thing. If you eat this, it's going to be totally black. It's going to make you uh, a cool right. or whatever. Like, No, like, what I don't <laughs> like about that, and I'm going to say this, I don't like that they take our creativity and then they kind of use it against us. Because I feel like if we mastered fried chicken, if we grew watermelon and we did that, every time you hear watermelon fried chicken, it's like a bad thing for black people. Oh, that's too black. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't no. Eat watermelon. Like, that's yeah. something that we yeah. should be proud I don't about. Watermelon. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, like, we should be proud about that. Like, you know, we cooked the shit out some fried chicken. Mm-hmm. And I remember as a personal chef, 
cooking for a white family, several white families. I think I gotta go in there and make some fragua and this and you know Chilean sea bass and risotto and all this stuff. Right. And, they want and I asked them what they want. They want fried, fried chicken, chicken, mac, mac and, and cheese, cheese the potato greens. salad. Right. They want all of it. So let me throw and you. So, this, so hold on, let me throw, let me throw you guys this question. So African slave culture has influenced modern American cuisine in terms of like. Soul food, and now they call it comfort food because nobody wants to call it soul food anymore. Soul food's out the You know what I mean? When other people took over it, then it was became so you know comfort Comfort food. food. With that said, you have a lot of chefs, non African American chefs, that are opening restaurants and getting James Beard awards for you know soul food fusions, and you have Asian guys that are doing like Korean, yeah, Korean Korean fried. So like um. What happened to that? And, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a loaded question because I'm asking, what happened to our niche in the industry? As a, and also, why aren't we as black chefs doing that and having, um, being able to get those resources to have these great eclectic like soul food and comfort food restaurants? I, th- I, I personally think that it's, it's, it's coming around to that, to okay. where we have that stage and platform to use it. Because the change of the turning into the soul food from the comfort food because now mm-hmm. everybody's more acceptable to eat fried chicken it's more acceptable to eat mac the cheese. green mac and cheese and mm-hmm. the shrimp and grits and these things because it, you know the brunch movement and all these things mm-hmm. that, different things in the last 20 years just think about from the last 20 years to now in terms of food when it comes come to soul food that has changed and it has evolved now we are taking you know pe- people eat with their eyes they want to see this they want to see that big piece of fried chicken on top of the with the honey, with, with the bourbon honey. Right. And the honey you know what I mean? Like, like, like I want to see that. Right. So, 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 so think about it in terms, of, I think that we actually took it and we actually, we are making it our own now. We are making it. You have right. these, these chefs and these these different culinary uh, wizards that's doing these things and, and making it making it okay to have a comfort food restaurant. And strictly, you know, we only serve shrimp and greens and fried right, chicken. Right, right. You know what I mean? So I, I, think, I think that... Um, I think it's coming around to that, and I think we always had it. I think, but now we owning it more now okay. than we did before twenty years ago. You know what I mean? Or, or you know what I mean? Like in the past. Got it. I mean, it just boggles my mind sometimes because. What do you um, think? What I, I mean, it, like I was saying, it boggles my mind because, you know, one of the first, one of the first, you know, real executive chef positions that I had um, that I really felt like I was like owning the building. I worked for. Right. A white guy in Harlem who sold barbecue. You get what I'm saying? I'm yeah. like, but it was it was it was probably some of the best barbecue I've ever eaten in my life. You get what I'm saying? Right. My thing is, um, we need to be able to put ourselves in a position where we can get the resources to do these type of things because I feel like other cultures and other ethnicities take our food mm-hmm. and they put the resources behind it and they do it kind of better than we would to an extent, you know what I'm saying, on a global and more commercial level. And then we get stuck having Ma and Pa's chicken shack in the hood and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's like a, the disparity in that, it just, it, it just bugs me out because I feel like that we should be getting a whole lot more credit for the foods and stuff that we create. This is not a conversation about right. white chef versus black chef. No, no, no. You know what I mean? This it's is a conversation food. about like the, old, the, the origin of food and where it came from and I challenge any nationality, whether you black, white, Asian, Spanish, Latin, whatever, to look at the the origin of the food that comes from your culture right. and then try to take that and make it something, you know what I'm saying, a whole lot better. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, 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 think as a, I think as a whole, like, I love the movement that we're in currently. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I love the fact of... Uh, of Everybody has their own cuisine. You know, the Koreans have their own cuisine, and you love the bulgogi. You love the, you know, Korean fried chicken. You love these things. And for me, and just take it from, like, I just left a, a Belgian restaurant today. Like, that's, you know, even have that influence in, in the urban community mm-hmm. and having that, you know, have, having that presence because that wasn't there before. So that every culture is changing their, their food, and they want to make an influence on the people because it's all about the people and the experience. Right. So my man, at Real Mook Scoop. On IG Live, this just made a, 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 a comment. It said, gentrification of our art is what happened. So, how do you think... How, how, there's soul food places popping up everywhere. Right. And black people don't own them. Right. How did gentrification play a role in that? Wow, that's a good question. That's deep. That's deep. That's deep. 
I feel like, you know... I feel a part of it is that, you know, not just gentrification...